All right. <laughs> Stardust. Buddy, we got to talk, dude. I uh, I saw your latest videos, which were um, the rant about uh, more false rape accusation uh, BS and uh, the female projection and... Uh, I gotta tell you, I've been a fan of yours for months since. Oh gosh, this summer, which is sometime around June or July of 2008, and uh, I mean, I think you're great, uh, Stardust, but um, I, uh, I just, but like, you're most recent two videos um, are amazing. Um, I want to introduce myself. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I am Manslave, and uh, you probably see my uh, computer. <coughs> I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, and I have a colleague who you will probably hear his voice in some of uh, the videos on the channel, and you'll see his face. Um, he's got glasses also, but here's, his hair is darker, and he's got pork chop sideburns. He's a little bit taller than, than me, and uh, he goes by the name Disposable Human Doing. Sometimes I call him D or DHD, and um, he might come up with a different uh, name or whatever. Um, and we're fans of you, uh, of you, Stardust, and we uh, we're really um, we uh, we really appreciate what you do. Um, we've been through some similar types of uh, of. Uh, of uh, experiences as, as you have, especially me, um, me and the disposable human doing. We started up a um, a think tank, if you want to call it that. We started in in October of 2011. We began talking to each other, communicating on the topic of gender warfare or the gender war um, and uh, and female toxicity we were still we were still in our mangina phase um, uh, or our state we were just beginning to wake up and we got tumbled down the rabbit hole by a few things one in particular is that women say that they want nice guys but they don't actually pursue them um, women behave much in the same way, like your pro like your projection video talks about, and me and the disposable human doing, we caught on to this a little while back. Um, so your video is not news to us, uh, but it reaffirms a lot of what we've learned. Uh, and I'll just tell you that that you are quite accurate in that video you made about uh, female projection. We've noticed that. Uh, those types of, uh, well, that phenomenon. Anyway, uh, another thing that got us tumbled down the rabbit hole, yeah, is that how women project their own inherent fucked up tendencies onto uh, men to be reflected back at them, to see back, uh, reflect, uh, yeah, to see reflected back at them. Uh, what else? Uh, what really woke us up a whole bunch is especially what happened to me in the, um, in the summer of 2011, and um, when I realized that um, that being the whole uh, uh, almost almost like a mangina, but not not exactly that, but being my submissive nature, um, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, the the um, the willingness to you know uh, put women up on a pedestal. Um, nearly was the end of me um, and I uh, got a false sexual harassment allegation uh, who would have thought right who would have thought it was so easy to get one I mean asking a, a woman out on a date twice 
because she didn't say anything the first time, and I didn't know what silence means, because, I mean, I don't use it. Well, I'm, I'm going to start using it, you know, uh, just lay that trap for them so we can have some real equality, not the fake, you know, female entitlement kind of stuff, which is what I'm going to get to in a few minutes, uh, my agenda. Anyway, um, and then I stepped into, um, uh, I got caught in the, I don't know if you want to say crossfire or whatever, uh, invisible love triangle, uh, you know, stepped into a trap, um, that exists because two lesbian lovers are in denial about it because one of them's mom is just really religious and just, uh, very, very, um, intimidating and all that and doesn't want her, doesn't want to have to face the guilt of having a lesbian daughter and, and this whole lesbianism stuff is, is fairly common where I live at. I live in the United States and um, it, it's fairly common in the geographic region where I live and it, it's so common to the point that like nobody's really bothered by it much anymore. So like if these people were to come out of the closet like nobody would really you know, have an uproar or would even care. Um, they just hide it from their parents and that sort of thing. They needed a fall guy. Um, and when I received my accusation, I was devastated. And, um, well, me and the Disposable Human Doing, we got a video where we talk about how I was affected by my situation. And a few weeks ago, back in mid-November of 2012, uh, he was the victim of a false sexual assault, uh, allegation, and, yeah, he actually wanted to eat a bullet. Not, uh, you know, not that I can't relate, because that's, yeah, I almost did it myself for, um, well, the allegation I was victim of, and I actually went as far as to load up the pistol when begin to squeeze the trigger, just, you know, half a millimeter at a time, uh, but I stopped. Anyway, um, you know, part of me died that night, um, and it's one of those solidifying things, you know, uh, I had my bubble popped, as I think Barbarossa would have described it, and Barbarossa is phenomenal, so is Man, Woman, Myth. Uh, and Girl Writes What is quite well, uh, but Stardust, along with th those people who I just mentioned, you are one of the greatest minds um, on gender-related uh, issues. That is, you know, you're one of the greatest minds on all of YouTube. Um, and... I, myself, I and the Disposable Human Doing are grateful for what you do. Um, and this is what this is what I'm going to get into. <clears throat> we feel like, well, now after seeing your last two videos, the uh, the female projection and uh, seeing how you get so pissed off, and especially with the uh, rant about uh, false rape accusations, where you show that face of that dude that got all beat up. Oh, I, I, I'll tell you, I relate to you even more, uh, Stardust, on these topics, because normally you're just such a, you, you remind me of, uh, I think his name is Wilson, the, um, the, the neighbor of, uh, Tim Taylor for the show called Home Improvement, because that's what your voice sounds like, and, but normally you're just so really concise and, you're just such a humble guidance counselor type and you do really well and all that but like to hear just what's underneath the surface you know what I'm saying the, yeah where, where you're cussing and, and not just cussing in and, in and of itself but what brought you there uh, and what you talk about just and it, it is women I completely agree with you Stardust I mean, you just, I mean, you're such a wise person, and you, you just, you're so informative, 
So, me and the disposable human doing, we already admire you and put you up on a pedestal anyway uh, because of your contribution, but your most recent videos <laughs> are even better than your typical videos. Um, and, yeah, and that's okay. Alright. And who is it? Um... I'm going to have to ignore that call right now, and um, that's the disposable human doings phone number on my caller ID. But uh, I'm uh, I'm busy making a video right now, and uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll call him back. And I just want to tell you, Stardust. Okay, um, you and Barbarossa, as far as I'm aware of, are adherents or followers of a philosophy known as men going their own way, a MIGTO. And you're correct, it is perhaps one of the safest um, um, ideologies that a man, you know, could live by regarding the interactions uh, with women. Um, me and the disposable human doing, we regard ourselves as um, MIGTO adherents, but that's not enough. We, uh, we actually take it further. We regard ourselves as elite MIGTO. Uh, there's a difference. And um, I think you know what that, I think you know what that difference is. Um, I think I've said enough already for somebody of your intelligence to begin to grasp and especially if you see our videos on the Validation Warfare YouTube channel just the name of the channel should already tell you some things Validation Warfare uh, that's one of the cool I mean one of the savviest names that I could think up uh, other I've actually wanted a different name for the channel but so many were taken, so you know, started calling myself manslave as you know for me my own identity. Uh, and then the channel is validation warfare, and me and the disposable human doing. We began last fall, right on average, right around November of 2011. You know, we began talking about it and began talking about our issues. Uh, regarding women, what we're beginning to, you know, starting to see cracks in the mask of the dolled up face of of females, uh, metaphorically. We speak a lot in metaphors, analogies, I guess you could say parables, but, um, um, and um, we also express ideas through a very esoteric myth, mythological um, teaching method. Um, we use a lot of mythology and very esoteric mythology that we basically create ourselves. Some of it is rehashed. Uh, we just express um, things but, but come up, we, we, we create new ways to express them. And um, we have code names for practically everybody. Uh, the Femetheist, for example, she is Dr. Claw. Um, and we have code names for ourselves, um, and our names that we choose for ourselves. the The intention is to mock, to mock and to ridicule how women see men. You know, I'm man slave. You know, and I also use for the channel and for myself. I use a picture of a um, of a slave running away from the plantation uh, and the slave has to be African of, of African descent uh, which you know once again we we use the whole slavery in America um, as a um, allegory for how the, the gender relations are between men and women uh, sometimes we use um, the difference between customers and employees and how they're treated of course the hypo and hyper agency aspects. Uh, we, we use esoteric mythology as a teaching tool. Um, we began talking about 
just vaguely uh, beginning to wake up and talk about these things in October of 2011. Talked about them a little bit more in um, November of 2011. That's when we also began watching movies and studying them. Uh, kind of like how the ignored gender would do or how man-woman myth would do. We found out about this later because we didn't know that anybody on YouTube was doing any of this kind of stuff. You know, the, We didn't know about you, uh, Stardust. We didn't know about Barbarossa or Man, Woman, Myth or Rocking Mr. E or Girl Rights What or anybody. We hadn't even got that, we haven't even got that far yet then. You know, this was a year ago. Then, um, right around exactly a year ago, almost down to this very day, because today is December 1st, 2012, and um, I think it was like December 3rd or 4th or maybe December 8th of 2011. We began video recording some of our conversations. Um, we you know, would refer to them as meetings. We would record them. We still got them. We have not publicly released them yet. Um, um, we began to set an agenda even back then. Now we were still somewhat of an, in a mangina state where we believed the bullshit that women were oppressed for forever. We found out otherwise. We found out actually it's men that's been oppressed. Uh, but we were growing out of that male feminist kind of a stage because we were raised on bullshit basically. We were raised in a way that set us up for failure. We found out that it is possible for a man to treat a woman too good, to treat her too well, you know, to be too nice to her, to be too much of a provider, and, and then, uh, as what happened to the disposable human doing, uh, his girlfriend used him as a stepping stone to get toward the guy who she really wanted. Um, anyway, and then, of course, I was used a whole lot. Um, I kicked my parasite out nearly a year ago, um, and um, anyway, I've been happily single for, well, three more weeks and it'll be a year. I live by myself, um, I just live in my own, you know, my own habitat here. Uh, I'm out of time on this camera. Uh, so anyway, on this recording. I gotta get me a better camera. So anyway, uh, what we uh, began to do is we came up with our own think tank. Um, we have some organizations. Um, we don't have very many members. Um, and our philosophy is that of elite MIGTO. Um, you know, what you know about men going their own way and all that, well, we regard ourselves as elite MIGTO because we have an agenda to, uh, now we might not, you know, we, we cannot guarantee success, however, we have discovered in our think tank, I mean, that's not what it's, that's not the name of it, we don't, you know, we don't uh, necessarily, uh, call it the think tank, but it is a think tank, uh, it is a type of a think tank, and we just constantly study these these gender issues so much, like every day, I mean when I'm at work, I think about them all the time, when, when the disposable human doing is playing Minecraft on his Xbox 360, uh, he's thinking about it, When I'm, we, we still study movies, and now we're starting to see, you know, I was watching The Rocketeer the other day on Blu-ray, and I had seen that movie so many times. I've got it on VHS from 20 years ago, got it on DVD, and then uh, recently I got it on Blu-ray, and it's a fascinating movie. And used to, whenever I watch it, I just thought it was a movie about, you know, stopping the Nazis, and and uh, and thought it was about avionic, or a aviation technology and all that, and just, I really like the Art Deco style, and just, anyway. I think it's a good movie. Well, there's a bunch of what we call poop mouthery in there. Now, poop mouth is a word that we came up with to describe negative female nature, synonymous with the word cunt. But 
it means mostly what people use the word cunt to describe, but it's and it is one in the same, but it's not exactly. Um, so anyway, and plus it's a it's a way to basically describe somebody as a cunt and then circumvent awareness that you're calling them a cunt. I mean, if you go out, if you you know, if you're in the workplace and you call somebody a cunt, you know, they they uh, you know, you face consequences for that because people know what cunt means. But you know, you say poop mouth and <laughs> and you know, it's much more vague and um, they don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I started seeing all this you know cunt like behavior in uh, the Rocketeer uh, from the Jenny Blake character and what but we call it poop Mallory and uh, me and the disposable human doing we do a bunch of analysis uh, you know much like how man woman myth um, does you know of pop culture or the ignored gender uh, but we take it much further and we see in this stuff we see it, I think, like you, Stardust, and Barbarossa would, would see and analyze this, but we try to explain it to uh, to people, you know, and, and, and really summarize what it means, because Stardust, you do an excellent job of explaining stuff, but like most people are just too dumb to, to grasp it. That, now, that doesn't mean that you should change what you're doing. I, I, I me and, and the disposable human human doing, we are completely in favor of what you do, and we don't think you should change other than <laughs> be a little more expressive like you have been recently and go in that direction, I, you know, because you're just excellent. Um, but me and the disposable human doing, we digest this stuff a little more for public consumption. Um, and uh, we believe in equality of treatment. That means women better get their act together. Uh, that's part of the agenda. Uh, we plan to make dick every bit as expensive as pussy. Uh, then women, you know, when they're expected to jump through some hoops, maybe, you know, they'll earn some dick, like how men, you know, try to earn pussy and try to earn, you know, basically we, we've learned women's tricks. <laughs> now, we don't know all of them, but we know quite a bit of them, and it's amusing to use their tricks right back against them. Like, uh, last year I friend-zoned a girl who was pursuing me, or at least pretending. I mean, she, you know, uh, she did flirt, she flirted with me and all that, and it's somebody I used to work with. She flirted with me on Facebook, and, you know, i uh, I was being all careful because, you know, when too long, this wasn't too long after I got in trouble in the workplace for, you know, I had to find out, I had to find out that if you pursue somebody who's not interested in you, that constitutes sexual harassment, and uh, that's what I was told by the human resource manager, and it was just, yeah, anyway, so I was, you know, I was extra careful, and I told this girl, I said, you know, uh, I'm not sure what you're, what you're trying to do, but it's being interpreted, it's being interpreted as flirting, and her response basically was, well, so what if I am? You know, that's that's how she basically responded. That's not the exact words. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what it meant. And you know, I guess she wanted to stroke my ego so that I'd reciprocate and stroke hers, and so she feel all validated and all this other stuff and prove her marketability. Well, uh, turned out contrary to what she may have been hoping for because um, I put her in the friend zone. Oh man, she got mad like it wasn't supposed to happen to her. Imagine that, you know, that whole entitlement attitude and. Me and the disposable human doing, we make these videos and we're we're wanting to create an organization and teach people how to do these things and to turn the tide of the gender war and you know and and forget changing the laws, forget all that. I mean, no, you got to go underground, you know. You gotta you gotta basically like guerrilla warfare. Uh, 
And I, I told Dr. Claw, the Prometheist, and I say it in my videos, it's like, hey, women better get their shit together because this gender war can heat up very uncomfortably for women. And, you know, I got vows, you know, no violence, no, you know, don't hurt anybody, definitely don't kill anybody, do not damage property, do not steal anything, and don't get in anybody's pants but totally free to frustrate people because after all I mean if you've ever dealt with the public and, and customers and all that you know this world is all about frustrating people apparently and everybody just shits on each other all the time and it's just you know so that's the acceptable standard you know as long as we just keep it to that um and um Anyway, and I gotta end this video really quick because I'm almost out of time on this camera. It only records a half an hour at a time. I need to get me a better camera. And uh, so anyway, uh, Stardusk, um, me and the disposable human doing, we, we also use a lot of sarcasm. Like, I was in the workplace and some guy was, you know, he was looking at some girl that he thought was attractive. He was like, he was like man, look at her, she's so hot. And then I was, I was tormenting him. I said, "Oh, dude, you should get with her." I mean, it's it's like um, it's like, and then I said, "Oh, I'm sure she's not toxic. I mean, she definitely won't fuck you over. <laughs> you should get with her." <laughs> oh man, it's it's great. And um, but anyway, um, there are ways to uh, to deal with women. And because we've learned, and I think you know Stardusk uh, enough of these things. It's just we are formulating tactics and all that to teach men uh, how to protect themselves, like you would want, uh, but also how to um, how to turn the tide and bring the suffering back to the women where it really belongs, since they're so willing to inflict it. You know, I'm running out of time, Stardusk. Um, Okay, I, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Manslave. I know you're Stardusk. Uh, I think you're a great person. You do great work. Um, you, you're totally amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, I, oh, man. I, I subscribe to your channel. Barbarossa subscribed to mine, and that's like a very important subscription. Uh, you know, because all you people are just like so inspirational and all that. And uh, but anyway, I'm just gonna have to. I'm just gonna have to talk to you later, dude. You gotta chat me. I'm on Facebook, also as Manslave. Um, send me a message or whatever through uh, YouTube. And we gotta talk on Skype sometime because you're totally awesome and all that. All right. Um, hope to hear back from you, Stardust. You make video responses. That'd be great and all that so uh... thanks for what you do thanks for your contribution you've got an open invitation to join up our think club our think, our, our think tank and our uh... you know if you want to join any of the in, uh, organizations that me and the disposable human doing are leaders of and all that if you want to join in and get in on what we do you're totally welcome uh... actually you'd be like an honorary member that sort of thing so uh... i'll look forward to talking to you until next time, I'm Manslave, and this is the Validation Warfare YouTube channel.